In my 50 years of woodworking, I've worked with a lot of tools, but the one tool that has truly stood the test of time is the hand plane. In this video, we're going to dive into planes, how they work, the essential types that every woodworker should know and hopefully have, and most importantly, how to get them to work effectively to get the best possible results out of your hand planes. What's the most basic function of a plane? Well, the planes really got their start in turning rough lumber into usable lumber. What do I mean by that? Well, you take a, a log and you cut it, or you split it, because you, they, sometimes they would split the logs rather than cut the logs, uh, as in with a wedge, okay? Uh, and to turn that into boards, if you want to make a cupboard or a shelf or a table or some other piece of furniture, you need those things to be relatively smooth, okay? You go to a sawmill, and, and you look at the wood that comes right off the sawmill, and it's pretty rough. Nothing like what we find in the, the lumberyard. Well, that's because the wood in the lumberyard is S4S, which means sanded four sides. That means that they've taken the, the lumber and passed it through either planers or thickness sanders that they have smoothed it out on all four sides and dimensioned it for us. If we didn't have that capability, going back in time, we would have had to use planes for that. Okay, you talk about the, the, the 1700s, 1800s, your average woodworker, uh, your average cabinet maker or furniture maker would go to the, the sawmill, buy his lumber, bring it back to his shop, and he would, the first thing he would do is plane that lumber to turn into something usable that was relatively smooth. And, and actually, you could get smoother with a plane than you and I can with a power planer. So the plane does this by taking off shavings of wood. And the real difference between the plane and the chisel is that a chisel, you have no control of the depth of your cut. You control that only with your hand. The plane of whatever type controls that depth of cut with the shoe. Now, you can't see it from there, but this plane has a slot in the base and the blade sticks out, okay? And, and the, the, the base here is called the shoe, and the blade is just barely sticking out of it. The farther it sticks out, the bigger or thicker a cut it can make, but it's also the more force it takes to push it through the piece of wood. Normally, we go for really thin shavings. Now, this is actually, for, for a plane, a pretty thick shaving, but it's about like a piece of paper, okay? This one's a little bit thinner. There's some guys that can cut shavings if they're planes that are so thin you can see through them. So why don't we use planes more? Because we haven't learned how to use them. We're going to talk about how to use them. So the basic planes, the, the jack plane, the, uh, the block plane, allow us to smooth the edges up, square them up, and, and get them ready for use. Now, there are other varieties of, the, varieties of these, like this plane here, it's, it's longer one, is considered a joiner plane. And the joiner plane is essentially a long and slightly wider jack plane. The reason for it is this long shoe on it allows it to uh, kind of skip over the highs and lows points in the wood and even them out. So it's just cutting the high points and bringing the wood down to a point where it's all even. It does essentially the same function that we do on a power joiner. It's just doing it by hand. It can be used on the edge of the wood, but it can also be used on the si side of the wood, the, the, the face and reverse surfaces of the wood. Okay. Whereas nowadays we would use a planer, a power planer, to do that. At one time they did that with, by hand with a joiner plane. And they would take that piece of wood and they'd smooth it out and they'd make sure that they got any twist out of it at the same time. This is an excellent tool for doing that. Now there's a lot of other varieties of planes. This is probably uh, the next step as far as getting away from these basic planes. It's still pretty basic. And this happens to be a wood body plane instead of a metal body plane. This is what's known as a rabbiting plane, and it's for cutting a rabbit into the edge of a piece of wood. Now, the difference between a wood body plane and a metal body plane is mostly the complexity of the plane. If you look at this, there's only three parts. There's the body, there's the blade, and there's a wedge, okay? And the wedge holds the, the blade in place on the plane. I can adjust the depth of, of cut by striking the back end of the blade with a hammer or mallet, and that will push the blade out slightly. Or to bring it back up, I can strike the back end, there's a button on the back end of this one, 
Not all wood planes have that, but this one has a metal button here. And that will cause the blade to inch back up. And so I can set my depth of cut exactly right. To do that depth of adjustment on my regular plane, I use a knob here, which, which uh, does a little bit of lever action to pull the blade up, pull the blade up, or push it down. In either case, I want a very small amount of blade ex coming out so I get that nice thin shaving. Okay? Let's talk about a couple more planes before we move on from here. This is actually a plane I built many years ago for squaring up edges. You see it's got a, a square cutout. And I actually used a chisel blade. And just like this, it's a body, a wedge, and a blade. Okay? This pin here, which is just a, a piece of dowel, is performing the same function as the front edge of the slot in this plane in that it gives the, the wedge something to push against. So the, the reason I made this plane is the cutout in it allows me to help, help me hold it more square to the edge of a board when I'm trying to true up the edge of a board. I've never used it a lot, but this was my first attempt, and so far my only attempt at building my own plane. Now there's another whole category of planes. I said that the, the earliest plane goes back to 79 AD, the earliest that they have found. In about the 15, early 1500s, they started making what are known as molding planes. Instead of just doing flat cuts, furniture makers especially, but carpenters as well, started making planes that would do a profile. Now, I don't have a bunch of uh, molding planes. I actually just have two. This is a um, one for doing a radius, about a maybe an eighth inch, three sixteenth radius on the edge of a board. Unfortunately, I can't show you how, how it works because this old plane is warped and uh, it doesn't cut properly anymore. The blade's fine, but the body of the plane, specifically this insert right here, is such that I can't get the blade to make contact correctly with the wood. But the, those carpenters and cabinet makers, they would have hundreds of these, one for every single molding profile they wanted to make. And that would allow them the, the capability of making a lot of different profiles. So when I said earlier that some woodworkers might have thousands of planes, I was really talking predominantly about this type of plane. Now there's, there's, there's two other little planes here I want to mention. Well, they're not really planes, but they're kind of associated with planes. One is the spoke shave. The spoke shave is essentially a plane for working on wheel spokes rounded wheel spokes. Um, it's got the blade, the wedge, and the metal body, and, and you can get wood ones too, and you can use it in a pulling motion or a pushing motion, although the pulling motion is, is more common, and again, it allows you to take off that, that controlled shaving. You can get different types of spoke shaves that the, the blade, instead of being flat like this one, is rounded, or that the, the shoe of it is flat, whereas this shoe is rounded, things like that. Uh, they're not as common, but they are still considered a type of plane. And then this little gadget is called a scratch stock. This is what those old time uh, woodworkers would use when they needed to do a molding, but they didn't want to do, make a molding plane because they weren't going to do that much of it. And they would take a broken off piece of bandsaw blade, usually this is a sawzall blade, and file the contour that they want and then just a handle, and this would scrape along the edge of the board, and they could put a molding into the edge of the board with that. So let's look a little bit about how we use some of these planes. All right, so I'm going to show you how to use a basic jack plane. Okay, this is the most common of all planes. Now, we can use this either on the edge of the board or on the flat, the face of the board, okay? If this had just come from the, the sawmill, it would be rough. It would not be smooth like it is now. But the plane, and I, the first thing we want to do is set the plane's depth. I've already done this, and I've got a very, very shallow depth of cut set, set here. And we set the plane on, and it, it's two-handed operation. My forward hand is going to hold this knob, and its main purpose is to guide and keep pressure on the front part of the plane. My pressure for pushing it comes from the other hand on the handle here, and I need to change my pressure as I'm going through. As I'm starting my cut, my main pressure needs to be down on the front to keep the front part of the shoe in contact with the wood. As I cut through, 
I'll reach a point here in the middle where it's equal, equal amount of pressure, but as I come to the end of my cut, I want to light, lighten up the pressure on this end and most of my pressure being downward pressure being on this end, back end, so that I don't end up with the plane tipping forward. So, you, you're going to want to put your, your body into this a little bit, and so it actually works to, to push with your body and not just your arms. It also helps to have your piece of wood really tight in the vise. I obviously did not have that tight enough. Let's try again. So here's the shavings we're getting off of there. And these are pretty good shavings. They're, they're nice and thin. They're fairly consistent, but they aren't consistent in width. Now if we look at this shaving here, this is consistent in, very consistent in width. Okay, that's really what we're looking for. One of the big problems in using one of these is there's a tendency for the plane to tip. And that's really totally up to how you're handling the plane. So you want to hold it and use it in such a way that you're applying even pressure to both sides of that plane and not letting it tip. And of course, if you, the wood slips in the vise, it's going to tip no matter what you do. Okay, so there's a piece right there where I've got a much more consistent width, okay? That's really what you're doing with the plane. Now, I can do the exact same operation with this block plane, okay? It will also work for, for cutting on the side of the wood. But where the block plane really shines, and the reason it's got that low angle is if I've got to do some planing on the edge of the board. Now it is much, much harder to plane the edge of a board or the end grain, across the end grain, than it is to pl plane the long grain. One thing helps is to plane at a bit of an angle. There are some companies that make block planes with a skewed blade that make that easier. And one of the things you absolutely want to do here is make sure you have a very, very light depth of cut. Another thing you can do with this block plane is it's a really good tool for cutting a chamfer. Now I can, I can cut a chamfer with the, the bench plane, but the problem is controlling it. It's much easier to control the block plane because it's smaller and lighter. And I can cut a very consistent chamfer and by the number of passes I make, I can control how deep that chamfer is. The joiner and the planer have taken over a lot of what we used to do with jack planes and block planes and joiner planes, smoothing our wood, squaring it up. It's great for that and it does an excellent job. That still doesn't mean there isn't a place for these planes in our lives because there are sometimes when we got to do small pieces or we have to do uh, places where it just won't fit into, say, a planer. Now, you really can't put thin material through a planer very well or short pieces through a planer very well, but you can still work on them with hand planes. Now, what about the other function? What about the molding function? I wasn't able to show you the molding function because the only molding plane I have uh, is that antique one that really doesn't work properly, okay? That's been largely replaced by the router. The router is an extremely versatile tool that we can do a lot of different things with, but the most common is to do moldings. And there are who knows how many, maybe a hundred different types, maybe more of molding plane or molding bits that we can buy for the router. The chamfer that I did a few minutes ago with the block plane can be done with a chamfer bit like this. Okay, roundovers, we can do roundovers with roundover bits. Uh, a lot of different types of things we can do to come up with unique profiles, unique edges. We can even make uh, architectural molding for our homes using the router. But I won't say the router doesn't have limitations. It's a great tool and there's a lot it can do. But the tr tricky part about a router is the setup. I don't know how many pieces of wood I've tried to cut, say, a roundover on the edge and I didn't get my bit set up just right, and I ended up getting a line, a cut line that just wasn't what I wanted. And I had to go and find a way of cleaning that up or just make a new part. 
or I need to, to make a complex cut and it's just a little bit that I need to do and sometimes the, the router, it's just the, the time and effort to set up the router seems a bit impractical for that little bit of cutting I've got to do. So yes, the router is a great tool, but it does have its limitations. There are times, even today, when a molding plane of the appropriate type would still be useful. And you can still buy molding planes. Uh, there are, they, you don't get see so much the individual molding planes for just doing one type of molding. What are out today for molding planes are predominantly planes that will do a variety of different moldings by changing the configuration of the plane and changing the cutting bit. This is a modern molding plane. Uh, it does basically the same thing as this antique molding plane with one major difference. The antique molding plane can only do one profile and that's a curve, that's a, a radius edge. This plane can do three different radiuses, the two that are here and the one that's already installed in the tool, plus a chamfer and three other more decorative types of moldings. A tool like this may not fully replace a router in your workshop and probably won't because when you've got to do a lot of volume, let's face it, the router is a whole lot easier to work with. But what about those times when you just need to do a little bit of something and it's too much trouble to set up the router? That's where this comes in great. You can use this tool to do that chamfer that you need quick or that radius that you need quick or even a decorative edge that you need quick without having to go through all the trouble of setting up the router and dialing it in and getting your depth of cut just right so you can get a really good cut from it. Using this particular uh, plane for moldings is extremely easy. It comes with a built-in fence. You put your, your bit in and just go at it. Uh, the real key though is you don't want to try and cut off too much at one time. This particular blade I have in here I believe is a 3 16 radius, but I don't want to do 3 16 at a time. I want to do maybe a 16th. Take that 16th off, which you can probably do in one pass, maybe, maybe, okay, and then readjust the plane, bringing it down another 16th. And then we'll readjust it one more time and come down another sixteenth. There we go. Now I've just radiused the edge of this board faster than I could have set up my router to do it. That's where a plane of this type is really useful.